What's up, everybody? This is Zach with the Nerd Cave Network, and today I am joined along with Kevin J. Anderson. How are you that's, doing? That's me. Thank you. And how are you enjoying Pensacon? I'm enjoying Pensacon just great. We came last year and we loved it, so we came back this year and we love it again. So uh, two for two. I'm glad that you're back, and we just you just wrapped an awesome panel on strong female characters in writing, and yes. I enjoyed it extremely. So let's get into sure. it. How did you become a writer? How, what was the, the drive for you to become a writer? I guess I just had too many imaginary friends when I was a kid. Um, I grew up in a very small town in Wisconsin with kind of boring nothing to do. If, if, if you've seen the movie The Christmas Story, that's kind of my childhood. Um, little town, nothing else going on, and I read comic books, and I watched monster movies, and I um, read science fiction books, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell stories, and I started writing when I was like eight years old, uh, and just kept writing. That's all I ever wanted to do, and um, I went to college. I studied science because I wanted to understand how all that Star Trek stuff worked, and um, I just kept writing stories and started getting them published, but I'm, I'm a fanboy at the core, so to me, coming back and being a guest at Pensacon is like coming full circle and all the way home because if I had been a kid and and they had these kind of cons when I was a kid I just would have been in heaven and now I'm, I'm seeing the, the look on their faces when they're either cosplaying or they're meeting their favorite authors they're meeting um, actors on their favorite TV shows or movies that this is just it's just perfect because um, we had a we had a deprived childhood. I mean, I was always picked on because I was reading that weird science fiction stuff. And now it's cool. Yeah, because back even when I was growing up, being a nerd was not the norm or right. the cool thing. But now it's like, oh, well, I like Captain America and all of this. And it's just become yeah. everyone wears a superhero T-shirt now. That's, sure. That's I mean, it used to be that, you know, the, the football players and the jocks were the ones that ran everything and us nerds got picked on. And now it's like we're we're the bosses and they're working for us. So. <laughs> Nerds ruling the world. Yes. So you were saying that you liked comic books when you were growing up. What right. were some of the comic books that you read? What are your favorite superheroes? Uh, I, I, well, it's not so much the superheroes. The ones that I loved were the creepy and eerie and mm -hmm. and uh, Vampirella. I read a whole bunch of those. Uh, and I had, I had an uncle. I don't know why he had them, but he had like this box of comic books. And I just would, would paw through those. And, I, you know, they're just totally random Mm -hmm. issues there's spider-man and there's the avengers and uh uh captain america and the x-men and i just just ate them all up whichever ones i could find i read a bunch of daredevils and i never knew daredevil red and daredevil yellow i just picked it up and read it and, yeah and just loved them uh there was this gold key comics had a series called boris karloff's tales of of mystery or something like that i guess i like the anthology comics the the short stories that didn't have superheroes in them didn't mm -hmm. have continuing characters because they inspired me to write my own short stories and um obviously that has done fairly well for me uh, obviously has and with you becoming a writer what was something that stuck out with you developing your skills what would be something that you would tell an aspiring writer to do to become better well, becoming a writer, you can't just sit down and write a novel. You can't just sit down and write a story. Uh, becoming a writer is every bit as much of a constant training effort as becoming a, an Olympic athlete. You have to start out. You have to practice. You have to practice every day. You have to work out. You've got to keep yourself in shape. You've got to you know, eat right and do all the stuff that you would think an athlete does to be a whatever, track star or ice skater. To be a writer, you've got to do the same thing. You have to read all the time you have to study your work you have to um, watch movies and understand characters and understand plot and you have to do research and you have to go places and see things and and research things so that all of that information is in your head that you can draw from when you're going to do a story it, it's you don't just sit down and make stuff up so what is your favorite part of the process is it creating a character or creating a world that these people live in or is it just the whole thing what's your favorite part um, of writing? well the creating part is the fun whether i'm creating the characters and the world and the and the storyline uh to me putting that together it's it's like being you know a chef in the kitchen and looking at all the ingredients and just making something up um the boring part is when i have to edit stuff i've already written or proofread stuff i've already written because then it becomes work um and then like the last draft of the book, it, my books go through maybe seven drafts where I edit them and edit them. And the last draft, it's like everything's finally working. 
and it's it's as good as I can make it be. And then I really enjoy reading the the final draft to go, oh, it turned out. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first time I ever read one of your books, my best friend. He handed me a book, and he, he knew I was a huge Star Wars fan. And he said these were my dad's book when he was younger, and it was the Jedi Academy books. And that was the first foray that I had into the Star Wars expanded universe. Mm. And just the story that you crafted from the characters that were already established to new characters to the Sun Crusher and Kip Durin and the Glitter Stem, everything that you did in that trilogy set me on a path of collecting almost all the star wars books how was it it's my fault sorry. <laughs> it's your fault all that money but how was it to jump into the star wars universe because i know you've written several of them before they kind of axed the expanded universe no oh, they've made it legendary oh so yeah they've been, they've increased it mm -hmm. um talk about being a like a fanboy dream come true i mean i got a phone call and this was early on before anybody knew that there were uh, going to be a whole big Star Wars line just being asked um, would you like to write three sequels to Star Wars like well my gosh that's like my favorite movie so of course <laughs> I'd like to write three sequels to it um, and then of course the intimidation comes in you go holy crap I'm gonna write three sequels to my favorite movies <laughs> of all time uh, but then you do your research you know which means watching the movies over and over and over again and buying your boba fett action figures and playing with them because it's research and and of course. I, I built a <laughs> i built a model of the millennium falcon you know with the little uh, uh glue in the plastic components and things so um you just study it and you try to get your characters right and and i don't see writing a star wars book as any different from writing a like a like shogun a historical japanese book you do your research um James Clavell did his research on historical Japan. I did my research on a galaxy far, far away and a long, long time ago. So you listen to the characters. You listen to how Han Solo talks. You listen to how Leia talks. You listen to how Luke talks. See how they react and just take those. They're living action figures. You take them and then you play with them and you tell your stories. And I tried to make my books feel as much like a Star Wars movie as as I could. The Sun Crusher. I when I started reading about that, I was just enamored. I was just imagining it splitting a Star Destroyer in two and then going into a heart of a sun and not even being destroyed. And the whole process, like, how how did you think up the Sun Crush? You were just like, I need something that's just totally amazing. Well, if a Death Star blows up planets, I want it to be bigger than that so I can blow mm -hmm. up stars. Um, but when you're writing a novel, I'm not... I'm not hindered like industrial light magic. I had an unlimited special effects mm -hmm. budget. I could do whatever I wanted <laughs> in it. So why not blow up stars? Why not have it? But I mean, the, the Sun Crusher is just, it's like a, it's like an impenetrable bullet. You can just, it can fly right through a Star Destroyer and, and like, like perfect shields or something like that. Um, it just seemed like a cool thing to do and it fit with the Star Wars universe. And, um, you know, don't ask where I get my ideas. They, it's a subscription <laughs> service that I, uh, that I pay for every month. <laughs> now, I, I have to ask this, just because you were a Star Wars writer for a very long time, how did you feel when they kind of took the expanded universe and just pushed it over and started another expanded universe? How was that? As a writer for a long time, how did that you know, kind of make you feel? Well, when I knew that they were going to do Episode Seven, I, I immediately understood that that when J.J. Abrams came in, they weren't going to tell him, now you have to read these 150 books and don't contradict mm -hmm. anything in them. Uh, that, that just wouldn't have been attractive oh, yeah. for anybody to do. So I actually respect the decision that they took all of those books that we did, all the Expanded Universe books, and just put them into their own continuum. That It's almost like they put them in Earth 2 instead of Earth 1. Mm -hmm. So they're still around. What they could have done was said, these aren't canon anymore, so we're taking them all out of print so you can't read them. Yeah. Um, I much prefer the fact that they've just said, this is a different storyline. We've done, I mean, I've worked with superheroes and comics and all that. Um, how many times have they rebooted Batman and rebooted oh, yes. Spider-Man or whatever? <laughs> several so times. Star Wars, they, they had all these years of the extended universe, and it's like they decided to reboot, and they're starting mm -hmm. their version after Return of the Jedi. That's cool with me. You can still read the extended universe ones, and you can, and that way I get to go see Episode Seven like a real fan again and not know what's going on. Yeah. 
Now, speaking of Episode 7, and kind of tying into your panel that you were talking about, what was your thoughts on Rey as a character? I know a lot of people call, say that she's too good to be true and say some things about her, but I think she was a very strong character. What are oh, your thoughts on I, her? I thought Rey was a terrific character in the way she was a strong and independent woman. But the coolest thing about, about Rey as a female character is that they did not have to cheat or do anything to make her sexy. They didn't do any scantily clad things or big boobs or anything like that. Metal she was just a she was just a tough young lady and she kicked butt and she fought just as well as anybody else and they did not make the point that, you know, with the camera angles and shooting her figure or anything. She was just beautiful and sexy and they didn't have to make a point of that. And I I appreciate it for that. And I think that spoke volumes for the direction of the new trilogy and whatever they're doing with Star Wars. I mean, Wars. It, it, it could have been in the Jabba the Hutt's Princess Leia mm-hmm. in the bikini, and, well, we could... That's another whole discussion because <laughs> they think that that was exploitive, but I'm thinking, you know, he f- Jabba forced her to wear that uniform, and she killed him. So, yeah. you know, she's a pretty tough lady, even in the gold bikini, too. So Leia kicks butt, too. So what are some things that you're working on right now that you would like people to hear about so they can go out and read... Well, one of the things I've been working on is uh, some steampunk fantasy with uh, Neil Peart, who's the drummer from the band Rush. He and I have written a book called Clockwork Angels, which is the novelization of one of their big concept albums that came out a couple years ago. Neil and I just finished a book called Clockwork Lives, which is like the spinoff or the sequel to that. And then independently, I have a book coming out in April called 2113, which is just a book collection of stories inspired by the music of Rush. And Rush has been this huge influence on me since I was in high school and all their songs have inspired stories from me and a lot of other writers as well. So uh, 2113 comes out in April and that's my next book on the docket. That sounds awesome. I love Rush, so I definitely have to check that out. Where can people find you on social media? Um, You can look for uh, my initials, KJA. So it's kjablog.com is my blog or I'm, I'm the, the word the, KJA on Twitter. Or just look for my name on Facebook. Um, or come to Pensacon. Or come to yeah. any of the other 22 cons I'm doing this year. <laughs> so doing a lot of comic cons and just appearing in public so that I can meet the fans in person. Well, thank you for taking out your time, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. All right. Thank you, Zach. Have a great day. Hope to see you again next year. Yes, exactly. This has been Zach with the Nerd Cave Network, and have a week. <laughs>